Welcome, gentlemen. I'm very much looking forward uh, to the discussion that we're going to have uh, on this important hearing uh, to discuss the build-up to the 100-year anniversary. That's truly 100 years, the anniversary of the founding of the National Park Service and our national park system. Specifically, we're here to review a report that the Park Service issued last month entitled A Call to Action, Preparing for the Second Century of Stewardship and Engagement. It identifies 36 separate actions the Park Service plans to undertake in preparation for the agency's centennial in 2016. Over the past two decades, there have been a number of reports that have attempted to provide guidance to the Park Service. These range from the Park Service's so-called Veil Agenda, issued 20 years ago, to the Bush Administration's Centennial Challenge Initiative five years ago, which focused on raising billions to promote specific programs in the parks. And last year, the National Parks Conservation Association convened the National Parks Second Century Commission, which was co-chaired by uh, former Senators Howard Baker and Bennett Johnston, to provide recommendations to the Park Service as it moves forward in its second century of operation. I don't have to tell the uh, Director of the Park Service that a tremendous amount of time and professional expertise has been invested in all of these reports. Our challenge is to see Congress work with the Park Service to use these recommendations to make sure that the service and our park system are fully prepared for the next 100 years. But while we're here, let's not forget what the national park system has become over the first and the last 100 years. From the creation of the first park, Yellowstone, in 1872 to today, our national parks have helped us better understand our history and protect special landscapes. The national parks unite us. They are a place for people from all across the globe to come together to recreate, to find adventure or calm for peaceful contemplation. For me personally, national parks have helped shape who I am today. Uh, many people are familiar with my father, Congressman Mo Udall, and my uncle, Interior Secretary Stuart Udall, and their work to promote conservation across the country, especially through the Park Service. But in this sub subcommittee, uh, and in my passion for conservation generally, I often think, frankly, more about my mother and how she was the real conservationist in our family. She was a Coloradan. She raised six kids. She was a member, uh, I found out uh, later in life, of the NRA. Uh, she was a sharpshooter, a marksman, an angler, and an equestrian. And she encouraged my five brothers and sisters and me to get outside to get dirt under our fingernails to look, and look at and also tackle the steepest climbs to strap on our skis on the coldest days and on the coldest mountains. And her influence prevailed uh, in many ways. And that passion for the out of doors is why I campaigned to be able to chair this important subcommittee. And that's why one of my top priorities for this Congress in the coming years will be to build upon what has been an incredibly successful federal agency and make it even better. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention as a parent uh, myself some of my favorite times with my own children, Jed and Tess, have been in our national parks. Uh, they're uh, young adults now and old enough to pursue their own uh, outdoor adventures, although they do invite me along every once in a while. But it has me thinking about who will the next generation of enthusiasts be. What better antidote to the childhood obesity crisis is there than to get another generation of kids away from video games and outside in our parks? And I strongly believe that without developing a solid relationship with America's youth, our national park system will suffer. That's why I've started an initiative this year to encourage kids and their parents to get involved in outdoor activities in Colorado. But our enthusiasm for the parks is not without challenges. We all know the challenges the Park Service and the federal government as a whole face. A common topic in this subcommittee is the maintenance backlog that the Park Service and many other public land agencies face. That backlog is going to continue to grow, and the federal government is going to have to make difficult decisions about where to invest limited federal dollars. So I'm interested in exploring the endowment idea that is in this important report. Today I'm looking forward to hearing about this report in detail from John Jarvis, the director of the National Park Service, 
specifically how he sees its recommendations being implemented and to what extent this newest report will build on or differs from the earlier efforts. In announcing this report, Director Jarvis highlighted how the future successes of the National Park Service will rely on efforts from park partners. We've also invited two organizations with a long and established history of cooperative work to benefit our national parks to hear their views as well. The first organization is the National Park Foundation, the congressionally chartered philanthropic partner of the National Park Service. And the second is Nature Bridge, which for 40 years has worked with the Park Service to educate and bring school-aged children to our national parks. I look forward to hearing from each of our three witnesses uh, today.